Straightallday.com. This because we about to talk about the top five players at each position. I'm gonna do five separate videos, but we starting at the one. Erie PA, Aaron Collins. You know I'm from Philadelphia. When I went to Penn State out soon, we will play against Penn State. They called it Penn State Baron, but it was in Erie PA. I'm sure you heard of them. Trey from Chicago, what's going on? So we're doing our top five at each position. Top five at each position. Metin Corkum, Motorman. All right, he went to, he went to camp in Erie PA. He said, can I turn the phone? I right, turn the phone the long way. The reason I don't turn the phone the long way is, is because number one, I get, number one, the little iPhone holder that I'm using here works best when it's sideways. I don't even think I can hold it the long way because the iPhone is a huge phone. The six plus a big phone. Number two, I see myself better. I can read your comments better. And number three, this video I'm actually putting on YouTube. So I got to do it this way because it looks better on a full screen. That's the thing. I got you though. But if you can't really see me well here, when I put it up on YouTube, you can watch it again. But you can still hear me. That's the, the main point. So we're going to talk about the top five players at each, each position. Bailey, 81. What's going on? The T-Han, 275. Please swipe to the right. Share this. Let your people know. We're about to talk about the top five players at every position in the league we're going to start at the one position so when, I, when we talk about the point guards i'm actually looking at these from the espn 2006 fantasy projections not because i'm going to use their list but because they got the top players at every position listed they got the top i think top 15 listed so i think out of the top 15 i'm going to find my top five i don't think they're going to miss out of the top 15 somebody that i would put in my top five so i'm gonna count down from five to one and here it goes. So, first of all, at the, at the number five spot, not at the center spot, but number five of, of top five point guards, I'm trying to figure out, and y'all can help me out here, between these three guys for the number five spot, between Kyle Lowry, Damian Lillard, and Ty Lawson. I'm trying to figure out who should take that number five spot between those three guys. I think all three of them are worthy of the number five spot. One thing that I got, one thing that goes against Kyle Lowry is he has a very low shooting percentage. He only shot 41% last year. And the way his team got swept. My first thought was also Damian Lillard. I see a couple people saying Damian Lillard. But I'm also looking at Ty Lawson's stats. Ty Lawson averaged almost 10 assists a game last year in 35 minutes. And they think he's going to be a starter in Houston. I'm pretty sure he's going to be a starter. I don't know how they're going to shift everything around in Houston. But I think he should start. And Ty Lawson is a guy who plays a lot of minutes. So he could play 34, 35 minutes a game for Houston. And he could still average close to 10 assists. And he's over 15 points a game. They are projecting maybe 18. That's the fantasy projection. Who knows about that? And a lot of people saying Damian Lillard. A lot of people, a lot of people going hard for Lillard. I got a couple people saying Ty Lawson. And yes, please tap the hearts if y'all like what I'm saying here. I know you type in comments at the same time. Now I'm looking at Damian Lillard. He played 36 minutes a game. Good shooting percentages at his position with a number of threes that he shoots. Six assists, four and a half boards. 21 points are, I think y'all right. I think we got to go with Damian Lillard. I think Lillard does have to take the number five spot, the top five point guards in the league. So we're going to go with Damian Lillard, number five. Number four is going to be Mr. John Wall of the Washington Wizards. I'm a big fan of John Wall. I remember a couple years ago, I was, talk I was at this basketball event, and I was talking to this dude, and he was all against John Wall, and we was having this big John Wall debate. And I'm like, listen, John Wall is going to average – He's going to average at least 16 points and over 8 assists. And the dude was like, no, nah, I know he not. And we was arguing all this. I didn't see dude. I didn't keep in touch with him. I didn't have his number after that. Joma Farrell 112 what's going on? Let me know who you are, where you from, your real name, where you from, so I could see where everybody's checking in from. But anyway, I was debating with this dude about John Wall. He didn't want to buy into John Wall. And John Wall, the last two seasons, has been great. Last year, John Wall's season was excellent. He got a lot better. I'm a fan of John Wall. I think he's going to be even better this year coming up. His shooting percentages got higher as he stopped shooting so many long jump shots. His free throws probably going to go over 80%. 80 From Melbourne, Australia, Rambo Cool 1W just came in. What's up? Please, y'all swipe to the right. Let your fans know we're here talking about that. And Blue Rain said he thinks Dame is higher than John Wall. Because John Wall's jumper's not that good. I don't know. John Wall's jumper got better last year. His jumper got better and he stopped shooting so many long jumpers that he wasn't good at making. Now, Dame Lillard shoots a lot of threes. Andre from Brooklyn was going on. Dame Lillard shoots a lot of threes and he's a good three-point shooter. John Wall, he has that mid-range jumper and he's actually pretty damn good at it. He can get it whenever he wants. That's the thing. He'll make a higher percentage, I think, this year. He shot 45% last season. That's not a bad percentage at the point guard spot because they're out on the perimeter so much. He didn't shoot many threes. Ten assists per game. 
four and a half rebounds and 17 points. And his team, his team had the success last year. And they, they won their first round series, right? Dame Willard's team lost their series. So I'm not sure I can put Dame Willard over John Wall. I got to go with John Wall. Yeah, John Wall's IQ sharpen. I definitely agree with that, Trey Time. I got to go with John Wall at the number four spot over Lillard. So Lillard's number five. John Wall is number four. Oh, yeah, let's get to 20,000 hearts. Let's do that. Sports sports account one, thank you for the idea. So please, if you like what I'm saying here, you agree with it, you disagree, hit the heart. So let me know, let me know that the heart's beating. Let me know that y'all out there. Now, number three spot. Now we get into the top three point guards. I think everybody knows who the three guys who are left are. Number three spot, I'm gonna have to give to CP3, Mr. Chris Paul, the Los Angeles Clippers. Thing with Chris Paul is I thought the Clippers had a chance to win a championship last year. Especially the way the Eastern Conference looked. You saw that the the best team in the East was decimated the Cavaliers with their injury. I felt like any team that got out of the West had a really, really good chance of winning the championship. Not as guaranteed that they would beat the Cavs, but I thought the Clippers had a chance to finally win the title, especially after the first round. Y'all remember that game seven? It goes into overtime and they beat the Spurs. I'm like, I couldn't even believe it. I couldn't even believe what I was seeing, that the Clippers actually beat the Spurs in the first round of the playoffs. And this is after the Spurs won the championship two years ago, right? And the Clippers just beat them in the first round. I was like, I never thought I'd see the Clippers beating the Spurs in a game seven in the first round. As I thought the Spurs just had those intangibles being a veteran team. They had a good team. And the Clippers beat them. I'm like, man, the Clippers got a chance to win the championship. Then they go to the second round. They blowing Houston out in game six. I remember I was watching the game. I was laying on the couch. It's, it's a West Coast game. So it's like 12, 1 in the morning. I'm like, man, this game is over. It's the third quarter. They blowing them out. I, I would have turned it off. The only reason I kept that game on because I was like, I just want to see the Clippers celebrate finally getting to the conference finals with this group. And then they, then Houston just starts scoring. <laughs> and Chris Paul started pulling up for mid-ranges and threes and missing. Blake Griffin stopped trying to even score. He'd get the ball, not even try to shoot it, not even look at the rim. Nobody else on the Clippers wanted the ball. They could not stop Houston. Jason Terry started making shots. Who's the other guys they had out there? Uh, was Prigioni on the team last year? He started making shots. Who else? Whoever else they had out there. People just start making shots. I'm like, yo, Houston is actually starting to come back. The air just got sucked out of the arena in the Staples Center. Everybody got quiet. Nobody on the Clippers can make a play. And they blew that damn game. I was like, I can't believe they just lost that game. Josh Smith was making shots for Houston. Now he's on the Clippers. I'm like, man, how did they blow that? So Chris Paul, I'm a fan of Chris Paul. I mean, this guy shoots 49% from the floor. From the point guard position, that's a really, really high percentage. If y'all look at the percentages of other guys at that position because they're on the perimeter so much and usually probably the smallest guy on the floor. For him to shoot 49% from the floor, 90% from the free throw line, he's making 1.73s, 10 assists a game, four and a half rebounds at his at his size. He's not a super uh, athletic guy or a long guy and 19 points a game. Chris Paul is a hell of a point guard. Chris Paul is pretty damn good. And in most seasons, most leagues, Chris Paul would be the best point guard out there with me. There's a lot of competition at the one position. Let me know how y'all feel about Chris Paul as I'm talking about Chris Paul here. I got to put him at the number three spot, though, because the two guys ahead of him are just, they're just ahead of him. <laughs> I just got to put those two guys ahead of him for reasons that I'm going to get into. And Boston Ball said the Clippers always found a way to lose. They do keep finding a way to lose. I mean, they made it out the first round. Which was crazy that they beat the Spurs, but then they lost to Houston. I'm like, Houston? Y'all lost to the Rockets? I thought the Spurs was better than the Rockets, but the Clippers, man, blowing that second round series. I want to see how they come back this year. They still kept everybody. They didn't lose anybody. They got DeAndre Jordan back somehow, some way. They added Paul Pierce, which I think is the guy they needed. I think if Paul Pierce was on the Clippers last year, they would have won the second round. They would have won in that second round series. And... What was I about to say? Paul Pierce and Lance Stevenson. Even though Lance Stevenson, we don't really know what to expect from him. He was great his last season with the Pacers when he was damn near averaging a triple-double. But I think it was chemistry issues on the team. And then last year in Charlotte, he was kind of, we didn't know what the hell he was doing. But that we're not talking about the Clippers. We're talking about Chris Paul. So Chris Paul is number three. The only reason Chris Paul is number three, because the guys are number two and number one are way ahead of him. Before I even get to number two and number one, I think I saw somebody mention Derrick Rose. Unfortunately, I know there's a lot of Derrick Rose fans out there. He's not in the top five. <laughs> Derrick Rose is not in the top five this year because I'm basing this off of last season's performance and what I think is going to happen this season. And Derrick Rose, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure what we're going to get out of Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose keeps getting injured. The Bulls, who's the Bulls coach now? Do they still got Thibodeau or who's the new coach? I don't even know. 
when the NBA season just about to start, and I don't remember who's on what team, who the coach is. Can somebody tell me who the Chicago Bulls coach is this year? I don't even know. Derrick Rose, I know he got the little, he got an injury a couple days ago. It wasn't serious. He's going to be back in a couple. Fred Hoiberg is the coach of the Chicago Bulls. All right, thank you for that uh, dream chase of Dre. Fred Hoiberg is coaching the Bulls. I don't know how many minutes Derrick Rose is going to play. Derrick Rose is talking about I want to be healthy for my son when I'm 40 years old. I don't know what we're going to get out of Derrick Rose. I have no idea what Derrick Rose is going to do. Therefore, he's not in the top five. Can he get back in the top five? Of course. Does he have an athleticism that made him probably the best point guard in the league three years ago or four years ago, whenever that was? I don't know. He's had knee injuries, and it's hard to be super athletic when you've had knee injuries. But anyway, top two point guards in the league. The reason I had to put Chris Paul at number three, even though he probably be he's probably the third best point guard in the world at any given moment of the day, is only because these two guys are ahead of him. The number two point guard, Russell Westbrook, Oklahoma City Thunder. R Russell Westbrook is the number two point guard in the league. And the way, first of all, the way that Russell Westbrook ended last season, that last month or and Trey Tom said Derrick Rose being intelligent when he says that, thinking about life at the basketball. Listen, I get that. So before I get to Russell Westbrook, I get what Derrick Rose is saying. Listen, I got a life outside of basketball. It's not just about me sacrificing my entire body and my health to play in the NBA and for the Chicago Bulls. I got my family to think about. I got my kids to think about. And he's probably made enough money that he could take care of his family right now if he just quit basketball on the spot. I get that. At the same time, I'm talking about what I think he's going to do this season on the court. I'm not talking about his life. I'm not judging his opinions. I'm just talking about what he's going to do on the court. I'm not sure what Derrick Rose is going to give us. I have no idea. I don't think any of y'all even know what Derrick Rose is going to do. But we're going to see. Russell Westbrook. All right, Blue Rain said Russell, Rus Russell Westbrook. I got trouble saying Russell Westbrook. Say that three times fast. Russell Westbrook is a center in a point guard's body. That's what somebody said in the comments. I don't think that. But Russell Westbrook, the way he ended last season, man. It was like a, a damn video game. I never seen anybody putting up the type of stats he was. And the dude is so athletic. Like, it's crazy. He's like how Derrick Rose was athletic before the injuries. And Russell ain't had the knee injuries yet. He had the he had the thing when uh Beverly ran into his knee, but it wasn't that it wasn't a, a devastating injury. It was a what was it, meniscus tear or whatever it was. But anyway, Russell Westbrook, the way he ended last season without Kevin Durant and the way he was carrying the Thunder was like, wow. This dude's getting triple doubles damn near every night. He damn near averaged a triple-double for a month, for the month of March. And I remember I watched a couple of games just watching the way this dude was playing. It was just, it was like he was playing with 10 times the energy of everybody else on the court. Added to his talent, added to his skill, added to his mentality, that attacking mentality he had. One thing I like about Russell Westbrook, he plays every game like he's taking it personal. That's one thing you got to admit about Westbrook, whether you like him or not. And Takeru said he could have been MVP if not for his injuries. See, everybody's saying MVP stats. Yeah, if he hadn't missed so much time, he had played like that all season, he would have definitely been MVP. He played like that for like six weeks or two months. So we don't know if he could do that for a whole season. I guess we're going to find out. But he's also sharing the ball with the second best basketball player alive, who's Kevin Durant. We're going to get to that in another another video and Trey asked me how do I define John Wall's athleticism compared to Westbrook is a different type of athleticism John Wall even a Kyrie Irving or Derrick Rose and Westbrook they all got different types of athleticism so John Wall is like he's very long he got really long arms and long limbs and he's that smooth type of athleticism he can jump too but he's real smooth with his then you look at somebody like Kyrie he's not a, a super leaper but he's very agile he can change direction very quickly at full speed that's his thing his footwork his ability to change direction while moving and dribbling the ball is his athleticism Derrick Rose kind of athleticism well when Derrick Rose was Derrick Rose he's really at most of the time a two-foot jumper he's compact he has he's not as long as John Wall he has a compact body more sturdy body and he can kind of bully his way with his size and his athleticism then the last guy somebody like Russell Westbrook he's long he can jump off two feet he can jump off one foot he could do it all. Russell Westbrook, I think, is like a super combination of all those guys' athleticism. And he's like a, he's super explosive. Where John Wall look as more smooth and athletic. Russell Westbrook's more explosive athletic. It's two different types of athleticism. But anyway, Russell Westbrook, I had to put it in the number two point guard spot. Last year, 43% from the field. 8.6 assists and 7.3 rebounds and 28 points a game. Like, those are video game stats. You get those stats to any player in the league. Like, those are LeBron James stats. Those are LeBron James stats, 28, 8 and a half, and 7.3. Those are incredible stats. And in any given year in the last 10 years in the league, a point guard put up those numbers, they're probably going to be the number one point guard in the league. However, 
Russell Westbrook cannot be the number one point guard in the league because we got to mention the guy who is number one point guard in the league, in my opinion, and y'all know who that is. Please let me know in the comments before I say it. Number one point guard in the league in my rankings this year, coming up this season, got to be Mr. Stephen Curry. Yes, Stephen Curry, the Golden State Warriors. You already know. Please hit the hearts. Please hit the hearts. Swipe to the right. Share this with your friends so people can come in and say it. So everybody knows Stephen Curry, number one point guard in the league. Why is that? First of all, as far as individual skills, like if we was having a one-on-one -on -one competition or just an empty gym skills competition and you put John Wall, Chris Paul, Russ, and Stephen Curry all in the gym, I'm not sure Stephen Curry will come out on top of that competition. I'm not sure Stephen Curry will win a one-on-one -on -one contest between those four guys. And somebody said, no Kyrie. No, Kyrie, I got, I'm going to get to Kyrie Irving in a second. All right, so I'm not sure Stephen Curry will win a competition between those four guys, but this is a results-based business, and last season we know what the results were. Stephen Curry won MVP. Stephen Curry's team won the championship, and you can't discredit that. I don't care what kind of stat. I don't care Russell Westbrook averaged 50. The dude won the championship. And he won the MVP. The only thing he didn't win was finals MVP. He went to his teammate, Iguodala. They had a great balanced team. But Stephen Curry last year, and only he only played 33 minutes a game. His minutes were actually controlled. Compared to the other guys I'm talking about, he played less minutes than them. He played in the low 30s. Or all of them were in the mid-30s. 49% from the field for a guy who led the league in making three-pointers. That This guy's, I mean... His shooting, his shooting ability, I don't have to extol his shooting ability. I already know what this guy can do. 49% from the field when he led the league in threes. That's just crazy to shoot that type of a percentage while scoring 24 points a game. 91% from, from the free throw line. Three and a half threes a game, which is crazy. He'll probably make more this year. 4.3 rebounds, seven and a half assists, two steals a game, and 24 points a game. I think Steph Curry could score even more points if he didn't have so much talent around him. With Draymond Green, Harrison Barnes, Klay Thompson, Iguodala. And Trey Tom asked, do I think I could put music in my Periscope vids? I'm not sure about that. Let me think about that. It's actually a good question. Actually, I might be able to do that. That's a good question. Maybe in the next one when that comes up right after this, I could do that. So I had to put Steph Curry as the number one point guard in the league just because of the fact that he won the championship. He won the MVP. You can't put somebody over the MVP. The guy won the MVP. And he won the championship. You can't put nobody above him for any reason, any way, shape, or form. Somebody asked me about Kyrie Irving. Honorable mention, Kyrie Irving. And he said, Curry faced backup point guards for most of the playoffs, though. Uh, okay, I may, I'm not going to argue with that fact, but he won the championship. So whatever reason you want to say he won it, he won it. And when we go down in history 20 years from now, we go back, they're going to say 2015 NBA champion Steph Curry in the Golden State Warriors. 2015 MVP, Steph Curry. So you got to get a guy's credit. No matter who he did it against, he did it. He got that championship. Kyrie Irving, somebody mentioned. Why not Kyrie Irving in the top five? Well, who are you putting Kyrie Irving above? I don't know who I put Kyrie Irving above in this top five because the thing is, if you look at maybe, actually, he could probably, you could put him in a conversation for the fifth spot. So we had Dame Lillard at number five, John Wall, Chris Paul, Russ, and Stephen Curry. I can't put Kyrie Irving above John Wall, CP3, Russ, or Steph Curry for the simple fact that all those four guys are the man on their team. They are the number one guy on their team. Chris Paul, you could say, is him and Blake Griffin, but that's Chris Paul's team. I don't care what you said. Blake Griffin got the most talent. That's Chris Paul's team. It's John Wall's team. Is Russ's, well, when KD wasn't there, it was Russ's team. And uh, Stephen Curry is Stephen Curry's team. As far as the number five spot, maybe you could put Kyrie over Damian Lillard. But the thing is, I think Damian Lillard is the franchise guy in Portland, and they made the playoffs. They had He had LaMarcus Aldridge, we know that, so we'll see what he does this year without LaMarcus. But Kyrie Irving was the man in Cleveland for a couple of years, and they didn't come close to winning any games. They didn't come close to winning anything. They wasn't even a 500 basketball team when Kyrie was the man. Now, LeBron James came on the team. He's the best player in the world. They got the number one, well, one of the top seeds in the Eastern Conference. So I can't put Kyrie Irving in the top five because I'm not just judging talent. I'm not just saying this is off of talent and skill because Kyrie Irving got that. He got plenty of that, but we also got to judge the results. Kyrie Irving wasn't getting no results, so he got LeBron James and Kevin Love on his team. Zero results and none whatsoever, even though he got serious skills. So I can't put Kyrie in my top five for that reason. So y'all let me know what y'all think about that. I'm going to end this scope, top five again. Damian Lillard, number five, John Wall, number four, CP3, number three, Russell Westbrook, number two, Stephen Curry, number one. 
I'm going to end this one. I'm coming right back. We're going to talk about shooting guards. And if you missed any of this video, it's coming right back on YouTube in probably about two weeks from now. Work on your game. Dre all day. Thanks for checking out this video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here. And make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day. Work on your game.